It is that time of year again. Let's have a look at what a UK tax return looks like in 2023. Hiya folks and a very warm welcome back to the Small Business Toolbox. I hope you are all keeping really well and you're all getting ready for the festive season. And of course the UK self-assessment tax return deadline which is going to be the 31st of January 2024. And you know what it's like, I'm filming this in November, before you know it, we'll be in the run up to Christmas and then you're suddenly into the mad rush of trying to get it all done in January. You might as well make a start now and try and get it out the road. So as per usual, same as previous years, all I'm gonna do is run through the tax return really quickly and I'm gonna make the assumption that you are a self-employed individual with a turnover of 30,000 pounds a year, £10,000 in expenses and that leaves you with a £20,000 profit. As per usual folks, please don't take anything on this channel as gospel. I am not an accountant. I'm just kind of trying to show you the stuff that I think you should have been shown in school. But at the point that you're doing this in real life, you have got to get an accountant involved, at least for your first couple of tax returns until you fully understand how everything works. The exciting news is, something has changed in the UK tax return and for once this video will be a little bit different to last year's one. So let's head over to the computer and we will see what's new. So first thing as per usual is just to log into the government gateway. I've just gone to this address that's at the top there. Scroll down and click sign in. Obviously enter your government gateway details and do all of the two-factor authentication. And then once I'm logged in, I'm just gonna click the self-assessment option and then complete your tax return. We're then onto this file a return page. And if we scroll down, I'll just click start now. And then we've got this screen here. Now, I think this is new. I don't remember seeing this before. Um, let us know in the comments if you've seen this before, but it seems to have automatically brought in information from my P60, which is about time. There's never been a reason why they couldn't really do that. What does it say here? Help about information we hold about you. HMRC are given information each tax year about income you receive. As a self-assessment customer, we have created a page of information we hold to assist you when completing your tax return. The relevant sections of your tax return will be populated with this data. If you disagree with any of the information, you will need to access each section and amend the values. And if you want to tell us why you're making the changes, please use the additional information page. Well, oh my word, PAYE and self-assessment finally talk to each other automatically. I guess I'll just tick this box and next. So all the usual stuff, just fill in your personal information as you normally would. Once you've filled all that in, just click save and continue. Were you an employee or a director of a limited company? It seems to have actually completed that automatically for me, so that is great. But obviously if you were only self-employed and you weren't a director or an employee of a company, then just make sure you've got that set to zero there and don't put any employer details in. And then if you scroll down, was your turnover more than a thousand pounds in total from all self-employments? And we're gonna say yes. How many self-employed businesses did you have? We'll say one. What was the business name? As per usual, I'm just gonna put Andy Mac Drums. Were you in a partnership? No. Did you receive income from UK land and property? No. Any foreign income? Nope. And did you dispose of any chargeable assets, etc.? Nope. Save and continue. And then again, to keep this simple, any interest, we're gonna say no. Dividends, no. Pensions, no. Child benefit for the purposes of this example, I'm just saying no. Coronavirus support payments, no. Other income, no. Taxable losses, no. Pension saving tax charges, no. Personal pension, nope. Charity, nope. Born before 1935, nope. We're not gonna bother transferring 10% of our personal allowance to a spouse. Other tax reliefs, nope. Job Centre Plus stuff, nope. Tax Advisor, nope. Tax Avoidance Schemes, nope. And are you acting in capacity of someone else? Nope. Save. Pointless spam message at the top there. Save again. And then we've got the usual sections of the tax return as per all the questions that we've just answered. Obviously, if you've answered yes to any of those and you've added extra sections into your tax return, for example, to declare bank interest or dividends or anything like that, then you'll have extra sections here that you'll need to fill in. But for the purposes of this, and just to keep things really, really simple, all we're gonna do 
is the self-employment section here. So Andy McDrum, self-employment. I'm just going to fill that in. Did I have an annual turnover of 85,000 or more? Nope. And then I'm not going to read all this out. All I'm going to say is none of these apply, but obviously you need to go through this and double check if any of that is applicable to yourself. But generally speaking, none of these apply. Save and continue. Business description. I'm just going to put drum teacher. Obviously, you can put your business address details in. Has the business name changed? No. If the business started after 5th of April 2022, enter the start date. I'm not going to bother with that. Did it cease trading? No. Save and continue. Date your accounts are made up to. This is the 22-23 tax year I'm doing here, so it'll be 5th of April 2023. Did you use cash basis? Yes. Do bear in mind the thresholds for cash basis, by the way. 150,000, 300,000 are the numbers you need to be aware of. If you're well below that, cash basis should be fine. But as per usual, check that with your accountant, because if your accountant's done accruals-based accounts, then you need to click the No button there. Save and continue. And here we go. Turnover. Let's say we made 30,000 turnover, as per usual. And then these next two boxes, generally I would leave those blank unless you are wanting to take into account the trading allowance, but on a £30,000 turnover, that's probably not going to be an option. And then how would we like to record our expenses as a single figure, please? That's nice and easy. And we're saying £10,000 expenses. So save and continue. Annual investment allowance and capital allowances and all that sort of thing. We're going to leave all that. Save and continue. Goods or services for your own use. Again, we're going to leave all that blank. Save and continue. Loss from this tax year set off against other income for 22, 23. All of this sort of stuff. Again, we're going to leave that blank. I'm not even going to get into it, sis. So we're going to leave that blank as well. Are you exempt from class 4 NI? I'm assuming not. So none of these apply. Save and continue. Any other information? Nope. That's basically it. We'll just scroll down, save and continue. But if you had additional businesses, you could add them in here as well, obviously. Class 2 NI, well, that will be payable because we've made too much profit. Do you want to pay Class 2 NI voluntarily? Nope. Underpaid tax from previous years is zero. Is that correct? We'll just say yes. Coding notice adjustment, is that correct? We'll say yes. Other debts, and it says please enter zero if there's nothing. So we'll put zero. Overpaid tax claim a repayment. We're not going to bother with that. We'll just click next. We don't want an adjustment to our PAYE tax code. So I'm just going to click no, save. Adjustments to tax due. Not going to bother with any of that, save. No to any other information. Add an attachment. Nope. Save. And as per usual, you can view your tax calculation on here. What I would suggest you do as well is view and print a full copy of your tax calculation so you've got it to hand in case you get audited and just double check it, make sure it all makes sense. Do I want to reduce payments on account? Nope. And then definitely scroll down here and save a copy of your tax return. Normally I would just do the PDF version, but again, if you get audited, you want to make sure you've got a copy of that to hand just in case you need to refer to it. So once you've done the view PDF and you've saved it somewhere, then just save and continue again. And then you get to the declaration, fill in all the declaration information and click submit. And that is your tax return done for another year. So there you go, folks. I hope that has been vaguely useful. I have got another video coming out very shortly for all you company car owners out there who are struggling to make sense of P11Ds and all that sort of thing. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, do hit subscribe and you will then magically see that video pop up in your feed when I release it. If you do have any general kind of questions, pop them down below in the comments. I will do my best to answer a few of them, but generally speaking, my answer is probably going to be check with your accountant because only your accountant is going to know the intricacies of your financial affairs and be able to kind of give you that level of advice. I'm not qualified in any way to give you any accountancy advice or legal advice or any advice really. I'm just trying to give you enough general information so that when you go to your accountant, you've got a vague idea of what they're talking about. If you are an accountant, by the way, do also feel free to chip in on replies to people down below. You might even get a bit of business out of it. Who knows? As per usual, folks, good luck on your small business journey and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye.